You're watching Raider Nation TV. Well, it was another busy week on the sports schedule for the Raiders as the volleyball team hosted two games, the cross country team went to two meets, and the football team went on the road for their third game of the season. We'll start things off with some volleyball highlights as Lyman hosted winner on Tuesday. In the first set, the Lady Warriors won't be able to handle the Bailey left serve, forcing them to call a timeout to try and stop the Raiders' momentum with the score 8-6 Lyman. Later on, Rachel Chester would put the Raiders up 12-7 with this shot down the line. Junior libero Chesney Garnis would get an ace here to keep the Raider momentum rolling. And Bailey Luff would get a nice dig with Jessica Welter getting the bump. Eventually, winner would side out and the Raiders would take the first set 25-16. In the third set, Bailey Allman would get the nice dig and also the pass to Luff, who would drop one over the net for the point. But the highlights would be few and far between as the Lady Warriors would defeat the Raiders three sets to one. On Saturday, the Bennett County Lady Warriors came to the Lyman Gardens to do battle with the Raiders. Lyman took the first two sets, 25-19 and 25-20, so to the third set we go. Early in the third, Allman would set up Anna Flintner for the kill, and then Chesney Garnas would get an ace as the Raiders were in control early, up 6-2. Bailey Luff would get the stuff here as Lyman would build on their lead. The Warriors would try to keep it close down 20-18 until Allman would set up junior middle hitter Jessica Welter for the kill. And Allman Ace would make the score 24-19 and the Raiders would go on to win the match three sets to none. After the match, I talked to junior setter Bailey Allman about how they bounced back from their loss to winner and also what their goals are as a team for this year. Well, we started off with doing a lot of sprints and not being able to walk during practice and we worked on our serving because our serving is not very good right now, but we're still a little struggling with that a little bit, but that's mainly what we did was run and do stations a lot. Yeah, we want to make it to state. Our first goal is um, obviously districts again and then go on from there. Well, the Lyman Raider football team went on the road for the second time this year as they took the short trip up north for a matchup with the Lower Brule Sioux. Lower Brule's field has one of the best views in the state as the Missouri River is just down over the hill. It was another perfect night for football and the Raiders wasted no time in scoring as Jalen Uthi would take it on in just the second play of the game, making 8-0 eight, eight Lyman. The defense wouldn't give up many yards on this run play, as Dale LaRush would be stopped by Charlie LaRush. Lord Brule would have to punt on his first possession, and Charlie LaRush would have a good return, but it would be negated by a penalty on Lyman. Two plays later, Charlie LaRush would make a cut and go down the sideline, outrunning the Sioux defense for the score. And that would make it 16-0 Lyman. Him. 13 of Quarter Cropsey's 118 yards rushing came on this attempt as he moved the pile into Sioux territory. Later on, Cropsey would get the pitch and follow his blockers up the middle for another Raider touchdown, making it 24-0 Lyman still in the first quarter. For Lower Brule, Dale LaRush would pass it to Ishmael Harding for a short gain, but the Sioux couldn't get any offense going early. After an unsuccessful fourth down conversion, the Raiders would take over deep in Sioux territory and sophomore Trey Munline would break free for the score. Senior fullback Ben Othier would punch in the two point, try to make it 32-0 after one quarter. 
Moneyline showed off his speed and power, breaking one tackle and avoiding another to take it to the house on this play. On the two-point conversion, Nick Hayes would get the attempt and put it in. A lower Brule tried to get back in the game by throwing deep, but senior Justice Jennings would pick it off and have a nice return, putting the Raiders in good field position still in the second quarter. Cropsey would make it look easy on this run as he puts it in for a second score of the day. Hayden Cleveland would lob it to Nick Hayes and the two-point conversion would be good. Later on, Cleveland would hook up with Trey Munline on this nice pass and then score on a quarterback keeper to make the final score 56-0 Lyman. Well, after the game, I talked to head coach Mike Kiefer and asked him about the positives and negatives of this football game and also about their next contest. Well, we executed well on offense and uh, defensively we finally played low and flew to the football. So, uh, you know, kind of some things that we've been working on in the, uh, uh, this last week. So I was happy to see that. You know, we had, we had some false starts and those penalties are, are mental. And, uh, you know, we had one guy that had, you know, three or four of them. It's lack of focus and uh, we got to get that fixed. Play Kimball White Lake, one of the best teams in 9AA, and uh, you know, looking to go out and give them four quarters of football. The cross country team was in action on Wednesday at Chamberlain and on Saturday at Gettysburg. At Chamberlain, the girls team placed sixth in the varsity division. Coach Milton said the girls did an awesome job competing against many larger schools. Quinn Luff paced the girls, placing sixth, Chesney Garnas placed 20th. Other girls running included Anna Flintner, Ashton Smith, and Phoenix Scholl. The boys varsity team placed 13th with Jalen Uthi placing 22nd individually. Emmett Houchin took 54th and Derek McManigle took 56th. The JV team placed 2nd behind an 11th place finish from Harley Hogendorn. In Gettysburg, the girls team took 6th, with Sarah Herman placing 5th, and Garnus placing 18th, while Scholl placed 33rd. On the boys' side, Jalen Uthi took 20th place in the varsity division, and Derek McManigal was right behind him in 23rd, while Emmett Houchin finished 26th. Mundelein and Sazu also competed. Hayden Shelsky was the lone JV runner, placing 10th. This has been another Week in Review. For Raider Nation TV, I'm Matt Halverson.